Hi there, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Now today I wanted to share a fun dry embossing technique using your dies and stretching them a little bit to get more use out of them by creating these textured backgrounds that give a great impact on your cards and are really stunning results. And it's also a pretty easy technique to do and you do not need to be an expert die cutter. So I ended up using a variety of different types of dies in today's video to demonstrate this. So I encourage you guys to look through to see what you have and test out your dies. But if you like anything that I used, I'll have them linked down below or over at my blog in case if you want to check that out. Now for this first background, I'm doing some debossing, which I really like and it's kind of a nice subtle detail in the background. So I'm starting off with the classic heart dies from Spellbinders and this is a nestable die set. However, you want to make sure you don't overlap your dies when you're doing this technique. It might ruin your dies or your die cutting machine and you do not want to do that. So instead of overlapping them, I decided to just skip every other layer. So I have my three heart dies that I want to use here. So to add these together, I'm using some delicate frog tape, which won't rip my cardstock when I run it through. And I'm going to add that in two places to make sure it's nice and sturdy there. And it'll hold these dies together while I die cut them, and it'll make sure that it kind of acts as one die then. So then I'll take those three dies acting as one, and I'll place it in my die cutting machine. You want the blade side up, then the cardstock. I did it a little bit wrong here. And then throw down this embossing mat. It's kind of like rubbery, it's from Spellbinders, and that's really what you want for this technique to work. And then since I'm using the platinum machine, I'm using the embossing plate, but follow the sandwich that is correct for your machine. And the important part is that you have that rubberized mat to give some give, and it won't cut that die all the way through, but it'll make those beautiful impressions. Now for this second card, I made the background just a little bit more prominent than the image since the image is quite small here. So I'm using the Lawn Fawn Cross Stitched Rectangles die, and I wanted to create some frames around my image, so I'm taking some of those rectangles, again skipping every other layer to make sure they don't overlap each other. So I have three different layers here to create kind of that border and frame, and I love these cross stitching dies just to add a little bit of an extra detail there. And then I'll add that piece of tape right across there. You can add it in a couple different places to make sure it's nice and sturdy. And after that's done, I'll pick this die up off my craft sheet there. And then I can run this right through my die cutting machine. So I'm putting it right through again using that same die cutting sandwich. And then once I pull it out, you just want to peel it carefully from that delicate frog tape there. And it shouldn't rip your cardstock if you're careful enough. And this is just another way to get that fun debossing look on your background. This one's just a little bit more prominent to frame around that image, and I love all the texture that you get with this as well if you feel that background. Now on this next card, we're creating a very prominent background with a cover plate die, and this will kind of build up that snowy scene for the Yeti there. So I'm taking this confetti cover plate die from Hero Arts, and I love this because it cuts out that whole background of confetti, but in this case we're going to use it as snowfall. So I'm going to take that delicate frog tape once again, and I'm going to tape my piece of cardstock onto the back of this die so that it doesn't shift around as we're cutting it through our machine. So after I've taped that on, I can run that through my die cutting machine again. So I'll put the die down, cutting side up here. Then I'll put that embossing rubberized mat down and the embossing plate as well. And then I can run this right through my platinum machine. And when you pull this one out, you get a super textured effect for that background. And it really is kind of almost like a focal point to this card. It looks really awesome and stunning. So for this next card, I'm going to do a frame right around the image here. So it also builds kind of like that border. And so for this one, I'm using the October die of the month from Spellbinders. I'll leave a link down below where you can subscribe to the die of the month that Spellbinders does. And they give you some awesome dies right to your door every month for you to work with which I think is super fun. So I'm using this frame one for October, and I love this. So I'm adding that embossing mat down, the embossing plate as well. I'll run that through my die cutting machine, and this is just the same thing we've been doing with those other dies. And like I said, it's super versatile, and you can use a bunch of different dies with this technique. So after I'm done running that through, I'll pick that up, and it's a little bit crooked on there, but this creates a really awesome and nice frame around there, and there's tons of texture in that background, which I really love. Now for this next card, I'm doing the same exact technique we've been doing, except I'm going to reverse it to get that embossing look. So you can get two different effects by doing the completely same technique. So like I've been doing, I'm going to take this fun Seth after die, which is a nice little frame for some images as well. And I'll tape this down with some frog tape down to a piece of cardstock, kind of lining it up where I want it to be in the end. 
And after I've done die cutting through that with the same sandwich there, I'm gonna carefully peel this off. It was a little bit of a struggle, but after I got it, you just wanna be patient with that tape there. And once you get it off, uh, you get a really awesome deboss result. So you could use this side. However, I decided to change it up a little bit. I love how the embossed result looked. So this side is the one we're gonna be using for the card. So you can always switch it up just a little bit and you can get some completely different results. So then after I'm done with die cutting all of that, like I said, some of them I cut a little bit crooked on there, like this one. So I'm just taking my scissors and going right around there, trimming exactly where the die would have cut to make a nice rectangle that we can add onto our card. And then this one, I'm just trimming down for a background so we can have a nice border with the card base. And I'm just using my little tonic guillotine trimmer to do this. So after those backgrounds are nice and trimmed up like that, we could then move on to coloring our images for today's cards. And I decided to pull out the new Neat and Tangled Christmas stamps for these. I absolutely fell in love with these when I first saw them. It's the Get Yeti and Fala Llama stamps. And I think the images are just adorable and also the sentiments coordinate along with them super well. <laughs> Needless to say, I was excited to use these, so I pulled out the images that I wanted and then I'm lining them up on a piece of cardstock here, kind of like a puzzle piece, fitting them all together. And after they're all there, I added this into my Misty stamping tool, just in case if I needed to stamp it twice, I could then. And I'll pick the images all up with my lid here. And this just makes it a little bit easier to stamp them all at once. You definitely don't need this. And then I'm inking it up with a waterproof black ink so it won't bleed later on when we're doing our coloring. And I'll stamp that down onto the cardstock there. So giving it nice pressure. And then once that's all complete, we can then start on with our coloring here. So I decided to pull out the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens again today. Now I haven't used these in a super long time, but if you're new to them, they actually are a real paintbrush. So they're super fun and easy to use. And I always find that they give pretty great results. So I'm using them on Bristol cardstock as well. This is a nice smooth cardstock with a little bit of a coating, just enough so you can move these markers around really nice and easily. And they blend super well like butter on this cardstock. So I'm just adding the color where I want it to be the darkest and then I'll come in with a water brush here afterwards to lighten out that color and add a little bit of shading in my coloring here. So I'll do this on all the images and I also colored some images off screen that I'll be pulling on later and using in the cards as well. So you'll also see me wiping off my paintbrush to the side uh, every once in a while to get a little bit of a lighter color as I'm blending these out. Now these are super fun markers to use and you don't need a ton of different shades of the colors. I just like using one or two shades and then kind of blending it out with my water brush and I find you get the best results by doing that. So then I'm going to finish coloring in this little penguin. Now you could also use these markers without using the water brush and just blending with the markers themselves. But I like that you can get a nice blended effect with the water brush here. Now to add some more interest to this Yeti here, instead of just leaving it gray, I decided to add little tints of color here and there. So I added some little tints of blue and some red and orange as well to kind of give that Yeti just a little bit more detail and interest instead of just keeping it plain gray. Then I ran all these images through my die cutting machine with the coordinating dies and this cut them out with a really nice little white border around all the different images and this is a really nice time saver especially since some of these have little details around them. So after I had all those cut I brought in the backgrounds and I'm just moving around the images deciding which images I want on each background and this took me a little while but once I got it nice and figured out I can start working on the cards. So I added that little dog onto the sled and I added it up on foam tape right in the center of that background. And I added all the other images that I wanted to use on foam tape as well. So I added these two little penguins together on foam tape and just popping it up makes it kind of stand out as the focal point image and then makes those background the secondary images that people focus on. Now you'll see some of that little snow detail that I added underneath some of the images and on top of some of them. And this is using the snow marker by Marvy. I'll have this linked down below, but I love this for Christmas. It's super fun and gives some awesome results. So all I do is just take this marker and color right beneath all my images. And this makes a little bit of snow bank right beneath them. So I'm just coloring some beneath that llama there. And then I heated it up with my heat tool and this will activate that snow there. Now this first layer didn't really puff up like I wanted it to. I didn't find that I added enough product. So I'm gonna add it really thick then on this next layer here. And you can layer it up however many times you want. 
So then after adding that second layer, I'll reheat this up again, and you can see this time it really puffs up. Now you don't wanna stay too long in one area, but this really puffs up and makes an awesome snowbank, and it's got some cool texture in it as well. So that little llama is then standing in a snowbank and is kind of grounded on the card. Then for this background here with the Yeti, I decided to just do it on some of those little snow areas in that die cut background. And I'll do the same thing by heating that up and then you'll just get some of those little puffed up areas where those snowballs are. So I really love this marker. I think it gives some great results on cards like this and it just adds a little bit of extra something something in the background. Then also with this dog here, you can color on top of the images as well. So I went over top of his antlers, his nose, and the sled as well. And when I heat this up, it puffs up on there and creates a really fun look like he's riding through the snow. So last but not least, I'm doing it with this snowman here, but I wanted to share something. You don't want to keep your heat tool too much in one place. It will burn. It burns that little snowman at the bottom and it made it a little bit brown snow, but it doesn't really matter. I didn't mind it too much and I just kind of left it there. So then I'm taking the card panels that I created and adding them onto some colorful card bases that I made using some Gina K Designs cardstock. Now I'm in love with this cardstock, I just started using it and I have to say it's great quality so far and I love the colors. Now these aren't traditional Christmas colors that I'm using, but I like to mix it up every once in a while. So I used a bunch of different colors on these cards and I really liked the way that they turned out. So after I'm done with that, I'm adding the sentiments down. So for this llama one, I used the ingenious fa la 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 llama stamps, um, which I thought was awesome. So I added that on using some foam tape. And then for the sentiment on some of the other cards, like the snowman one, I wanted the sentiment to only be on the inside rectangle. So I'm using some of that frog tape, and then I'm stamping down the Merry Christmas Gina K Designs stamp, which is nice and scripty font there. And then once I peel that back up, it'll have masked that off and it'll only be on that inside rectangle, which I think looks awesome, especially with that fun die cutting in the background. It really fits with that background. So I've repeated the same steps in the dog card with the sentiment, adding the wishing you joy from that stamp set. And then I peeled off the frog tape from the embossed portions and it really nicely masks all of that off. And I like how the sentiment just stays in the area where there's no embossing. So the embossing kind of frames around that sentiment which I really like. So then to finish off these cards once and for all, I added some Nouveau drops here and there kind of around the images to draw more attention to the center there. Now I always call these my addiction because I love using them kind of as a finishing touch on the cards. It almost looks like little enamel drops, except they're really easy to apply to the card in matching colors and it doesn't make them too feminine, which is what I really love about them. It's not like adding sequins all over the card. Um, it's just the little enamel drops, which I think gives a nice pop of color as well. So that wraps it up for today's cards. Thank you so much for stopping by and creating with me. I love how these cards turned out with those fun embossing backgrounds, and this technique is so versatile, so I encourage you guys to give it a try. If you like this video, please leave it a big thumbs up to let YouTube know. There's more videos on screen if you want to see those, and if you click that subscribe button as well, you'll never miss another video from me like this one. And if you want to see much more info as well as a full product list, click on that blog link there and it'll take you over there. I'll see you guys very soon. Have a great day. Bye.